Hi, this is Herb Spiro with the Dr. Vax channel. You've just purchased your first 3D printer and you've already printed the various models that were included with the printer on the SD card. Where do you find additional things to print? Well, stay tuned and let's learn something together. Today I'm going to go through five websites that are my go-to sites for finding interesting things to print. And then as a bonus, I'm going to talk about three additional sites that are a bit less mainstream that you might want to look at. Well, the first site, and you'll see this on the screen, is Thingiverse. Thingiverse is a very large site. It has thousands and thousands of models. It's well organized into groups of models. So as an example, I find that my grandchildren really enjoy these flexible toys. And therefore, it's really nice that on Thingiverse, it has them all arranged together. The primary disadvantage of Thingiverse is it's very popular. And over the past year or so, at times it's very, very slow. Sometimes it's not even available. While I was videoing over the last couple days, I noticed that Thingiverse was down a few days ago. It came back up. It seems faster. So perhaps they've put some more resources into Thingiverse. Now, this is what it looks like when you go to an individual page. So that's the print for this really fun, flexible octopus. And what you'll see that's interesting about Thingiverse is not only does it have the model, but you'll see that people are able to post their own prints of the model. And those particular prints give you a really good idea that the model is easy to print. If you go to see a model and there are no uploaded prints, well, maybe it hasn't been tested very, very carefully. Finally, Thingiverse is interesting because it's integrated with a series of applications. Uh, one that I've used is Kirimoto. Kirimoto is an online slicer. So instead of downloading the object from Thingiverse, you'll download an STL file. Then using a slicer such as Cura or Prusa Slicer or Simplify 3D to convert it into G-code, saving the G-code to an SD card, and then putting it into your printer, you can send the model directly to one of these online applications, such as Curimoto. And Curimoto will convert your model to G-code. Then all you have to do is download it and load it into your printer. There are also applications here that will uh, act as service bureaus to print your model for you if you don't have a 3D printer, or applications here to modify models. So Thingiverse is a very rich ecosystem. Finally, there are a series of models that work with the Thingiverse customizer. So as an example, let's say you're printing a box and you want it a different size. If that's a model that works with the customizer, you can change the size, the dimensions, right in Thingiverse. Thingiverse is owned by a company that really is the company that was the springboard for commercializing home hobbyist educational small business 3D printers, and that's called MakerBot. Now, MakerBot is now owned by Stratasys, a very large company uh, that makes industrial 3D printers. And MakerBot makes both um, home style or educational style 3D printers and commercial 3D printers for uh, design studios. Uh, their printers are not inexpensive. They start at about $1,200, $1,300 versus, let's say, this printer, which is $180, $190. Uh, but it's a good company, and they are the sponsors of Thingiverse. So theoretically, Thingiverse will continue to survive as long as MakerBot is interested in supporting it. So first place you should go, Thingiverse. What's number two? For number two, I recommend you go to My Mini Factory. 
My Mini Factory is a clearinghouse, a place where designers can upload models and sell them to people. But there are also hundreds, if not thousands, of models that are completely free on My Mini Factory. Um, often you'll see some of the same models on Thingiverse and My Mini Factory, and in fact, some of the other sites I'm going to mention, because the authors may upload them to multiple sites. The organizational structure on My Mini Factory is also quite good. Um, it does not have some of the capabilities of Thingiverse, such as integrated applications. So I'll often go to Thingiverse first and My Mini Factory second. You download an STL file from My Mini Factory, just like you would from Thingiverse. Then you slice it on a slicer, producing a G-code file. You save that to an SD card and print it on your printer. My Mini Factory does have one interesting capability, and that is not as an external application, but as part of My Mini Factory, there is an included slicer. Um, so there's a little link after next to a model, and in that link next to the model, if you click on that link, you can print your model directly to your printer. So you can slice it, save it to an SD card, and print it to your printer. Very interesting capability. I haven't tried this slicer yet. I've always downloaded it and used the slicers that I've optimized for my printer. What is unique about my mini factory is they claim these are curated models. So anyone can upload something to Thingiverse, and it's the crowd that opines on it, that rates it, that downloads it, that gives it um, credibility. However, in the case of My Mini Factory, they claim their models are all curated and tested. They've actually verified that they will print. And in particular, if you use their embedded slicer, that's an extra level of quality control. So it's something I'm very interested to experiment with. Number three, the third site that I go to is Pinshape. Pinshape is very similar to My Mini Factory. Um, at one point, it had some embedded applications. It no longer does. Uh, a few years ago, it looked like it was going to potentially be going out of business, and it was acquired. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So Pinshape does seem to have a lot of overlap with Thingiverse but it's another place to look for interesting models. You'll see here that what's interesting about Pinshape is while both Thingiverse and My Mini Factory have a social aspect and you can follow um, designers, you can like them, once you've logged in, signed into Pinshape, it appears the social nature of pin shape is the first thing you see. So the first thing you see are models from people that you've liked or that they think are interesting. So it's almost like a Facebook for 3D models. Now I mentioned that pin shape was in rough shape a few years ago. Um, they were acquired at, during that time by Form Labs. Um, so they're now backed by a significant player in the 3D marketplace. Number four. Number four is a little bit on the edge. It's called Cults. It's very much a place for designers to sell their models. There are both free models and paid models. One of the things that's interesting about Cults is there's an area called Naughties. These are basically X-rated models. So Cults is probably not a site you want to bookmark on your computer if you have children using the computer um, because there may be models that are inappropriate for that audience. What is interesting about Cults is it seems to be much more popular um, outside of the United States than in the United States. And so you gain access to a different set of designers than let's say Thingiverse, uh, which is used extensively uh, in the United States, uh, in the educational system, and is backed by a US based company. Here's an example of one of the models you'll see on Cult. You will see ads on Cult. In fact, you'll see ads on a number of these sites. In the case of Cult, you see ads whether you are um, signed in or not. Uh, but the models on Cult tend to be done by very sophisticated designers. Another interesting place to look for models. Finally, I'd recommend you go to a site 
that doesn't store any models. You don't upload any models to Yegi, Y-E-G-G-I. Yegi is a search engine for models. So when you find a model on Yegi and you click on it, it will tell you where the model is from and it'll take you directly to that site. So it will take you to, to my mini factory, it will take you to Thingiverse, it will take you to cults, it will take you to other sites. So if you're having trouble finding what you're looking for, then Yegi is very interesting. Finally, I'd like to point out three additional places that are a little different but have unique capabilities. Fab365 has beautiful, beautiful models. They're almost all paid models, but they're often a couple bucks for a model. So if you look at this screen, you'll see this is a cup holder. Um, these models are very, very high end. They're designed by professional designers, it appears, and or at least very talented designers. And so it's a very interesting place to find something you want to print as a gift or something you want to use for a very practical purpose. The next site to look at is STL Hive. STL Hive has a range of models for people who build robots. Um, lots of parts for robots, uh, wheels, uh, motor mounts, even all the plastic parts to build drones and robots. So if you're into building robots or you want a really interesting project to work on with your kids or your grandchildren, or just to work on for the fun of it, this is a very interesting site. I'd recommend taking a look at STL Hive. And finally, once you're comfortable printing models, you ought to start building your own. There is a wonderful, wonderful site called Tinkercad. Tinkercad is completely free. It's a 3D modeling site. They teach Tinkercad in elementary school to third and fourth graders. You're up for it. You can do it. So I'd recommend using these sites I've listed, downloading a series of models, learning how to print them, learning about your slicer, learning how to set parameters, and then start building your own models with Tinkercad. Okay, I hope this was useful to you. I hope this inspired you to go off and find lots of interesting models that you can print on your new 3D printer. And once you're comfortable, go to Tinkercad and start building some from scratch. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to it, recommend it to other folks. Thanks so much and let's continue learning things together.